What's up guys, this is Arthur from Bluff the Spot and today we're gonna do a little bit of a theoretical session because a lot of people have been asking me what HUD stats I use and what stats they should use on their HUD well, none of that matters if you don't know what stat actually means what so today we're gonna do a bit of a look into poker terms and into poker stats I'll see you guys soon All right, guys, so we're gonna look into poker terms today. Well, I decided to make this topic because very often people come to my stream or to my YouTube videos or even my private Skype messages from students like, oh, can you give me a HUD? Or like, do you have a good HUD for me? Or which stats should I use? And then I send the HUD for them. They don't study the HUD. They don't know which stat means what, and they don't have a good understanding of what things means for the poker terms basically some stats are different from holder manager to poker tracker or other trackers in general so it's nice to have a study into this topic so you actually know what you're looking for in game so we're gonna start with the pre-flop game which is usually very simple but still people do a lot of mistakes um, so the pre-flop is usually counted by number of bets so the big blind is the first bet always so when people post the big blind that's the first bet you have to count it as the first bet so the first open raise which is the raise for stem or some isolation from a limper it's the open raise and it's also counted as the two bet or second bet the re-raise to that or to the initial open raise is called a three bet and the re-raise is called a four bet. So to simplify, we call it only open raise and usually then it comes the three bet and four bet and then five bet, six bet, etc. There's also limping, which is just posting the big blind after the big blind is already posted. So just calling the big blind after that. And the next one is, well, cold four bet and cold calling. So cold four betting means that when the four bet didn't put money in the pot yet, then he makes the four bet. So for example, player one or player A open raises or two bets, player B or player two, three bets, and then player C, which didn't had anything to the pot yet, comes with a cold four bet. Um, in a better example, so let's say under the gun open raises, cut off three bets, and then I'm on the button holding pocket aces and I decided to four bet over these two guys. That's my cold four bet on them. The same happens with cold calling. Cold calling is basically when, same as cold four betting, but with just calling. So for example, player one open raises and player two just calls and doesn't raise it over. So that's cold calling. And usually it's like in position, but there's some cold calling on the small line as well. So squeeze is called when player one opens, player two cold calls, and then player three, three bets. That can happen very often on occasions like under the gun opens, button calls, and then the big blind three bets over the two opponents. So that's called a squeeze or like button opens, small blind flats, big blind squeezes it up. So there's a few terms to post flop, which people are not that aware of. So we'll take a look into that. So post flop, first of all, all those terms of like two bets, three bets are resetted. So everything that happened pre-flop is resetted now. We probably already know this a continuation bet means. Even the recreational players already know that. So it means that the original pre-flop aggressor continues betting on the flop or on the turn on the river. Uh, the next one people already start struggling with, so which is the stab. The stab is when the original pre-flop aggressor checks, usually out of position, on the flop, turn or river, and then you take the lead and bet in position against him. So also known as float for PT4 users. So the stab is as a um, practical situation. Let's say a small blind opens and you call the big blind. On the flop, instead of c-betting, he checks to you, and then you have the opportunity to stab. So when you bet into him being the big blind and him being the small blind, this is a stab, or also known as float on Poker Tracker. can also be found as bet versus missed c-bet, or something like this, into holding manager. So if you're trying to look for this stat or for this into your hut, try to find out for those names, either for PT4 or Holden Manager. In regards to that, it can also happen on the turn, even let's say if uh, the original preflop aggressor C-bats the flop. So let's say he opens the small blind, you call the big blind, he C-bats the flop, you call, turn, he checks to you now. 
and then you take the lead in position. So that's called the stab, float, bat versus me, see bat, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people already struggle with this particularly and yeah, don't have it on their HUD, which is just a spot that is going to come so, so often uh, in any games that I think it's very important to either study the topic or to have it on your HUD or whatever. We'll talk a little bit more that, about that in the future. As I said, post-flop, the bats are resettled, and therefore the first bat is called one bat. So since we're not counting the big blind anymore, when someone makes a bat, that's the first bat, and someone raises it up, that's the second bat. But commonly, it's mistaken, find it as the three bat for beginners or recreational players or, yeah, basically people that are just starting with. So imagine we're on the big blind, small blind opens, we call, flop comes whatever, he does C bats, which is the first bat, because post flop, the bats are resettled. And then you decide to raise and position. Well, that's not a three bet, even though it looks like a three bet, but it's the second bet. So it's the two bet, even though people don't use these terms too much for post flop. But I do see when people actually try to use it, they use it wrongly. So this is raising. So the raising is the two bet, not the three bet, as people used to say. Then there's check raising, which is the same as raising, but out of position. Of course, you can't check raise in position. Basically, your big blind button opens, he c bats the flop, let's say, and then you like you check to him, he c bats the flop, and then you have the opportunity to go for a check raise. But this is also called as a two bat, as is the second bat happening post flop. As I said, it only happens out of position when you check, face a bat, and raise. This is pretty straightforward, right? So post flop. Continuing with this post flop, there is the re raise. So you already did the raise, and then uh, someone goes ahead and raises again, which is the re-raise, also now called as a three bet. So opponent one C bets, you raise, he re-raises, that's the three bet. Dunk batting, also called as leading or yeah, a few other names as well. When the player out of position without the initiative or without being the pre-flop aggressor, bats and leads into the pot. So that's called leading or dunk batting. Usually dunk batting is more talked about the flop, but I already saw a lot of people talking about it uh, on future streets like Turns and Rivers as well. So that's okay. Then there's probing. Again, it's a name that uh, might be different between uh, trackers, like for example, Poker Tracker, I know it's pro, but I think on Hold'em Energy, you might not even have this stat, or it might have to to change the stats to be able to create a probing stat, which is basically, let's explain it first, uh, when someone misses a C-bat on the flop, being in position, and the player out of position makes a bat on the turn, uh, it can also apply for the river. So let's say, for example, player one opens the button, you as the big blind call, Flop goes check, check, so you check, he checks behind, and now you have the opportunity to lead the turn or to take a stab out of position on the turn. That's called probe or bat versus me, see bat out of position on hold the manager or something like that. So if you're having trouble, try to find it this way. Uh, I think you're definitely going to be able to find something about that. Uh, it also applies for the river in the same situation. So let's say he see best the flop, you call, turn goes check, check, and then you have the opportunity to probe the river. So that's a probe. Um, those two, especially stabbing and probing, I think people have a lot of uh, struggle with, but also the three batting part, people might get it get a little bit confused. And the last but not least, a delay C batting. So basically when the player with initiative or the pre-flop aggressor checks the flop and then makes the bet on the turn. It could be even in position or out of position because if you're out of position, the flop is going to go check, check. Then you have the opportunity to delay C bet on the turn. Or it could be also in position. So you check behind and you also have the opportunity if he checks again to bet the turn as a delay C bet. Right. So why are we talking about this? Well, I'm talking mostly about this because people ask me for HUD stats. And when I send HUD to them and they see, well, what is this probe on the turn? Like, I don't even look at it or I, ha I never studied this topic. So how can I actually look at the stat and take advantage for it? Right. So basically, what do you want to have on your HUD is all the possibilities that could happen way more often on a poker table when you're playing. So you're not going to put that six stat that is going to come once in a blue moon or once a month. You're not going to put on your head like the 
three bet on the river, you know, because this is almost never going to happen. And even if it happens, you're never going to have sample to that. So very importantly, you want to have sample for all the stats that you have on your HUD to work, because if you have a stat on your HUD that doesn't have ever, ever sampled to it, you shouldn't have it. For example, a stat that I almost never use and I realized I had on my HUD, I would never have sampled to that is River Seabed. Right, because river seabed is a spot that only happens on the river, and even if I had some opportunities against that specific player, I'd have like, okay, so he has 60% seabed, and then the sample is like six out of ten. Well, is this really like trustable sample? Is this really reliable? So once I realized that those tests are not working for me and I couldn't use it actually, I started removing them. So I showed you this presentation with poker terms basically to show you what is the most common terms and most common stats that you should be using. So especially for preflop is pretty standard, right? Like you're gonna have VPIP, PFR, raise first in by position probably. Uh, that's what I would suggest, kind of. 3-bet, full to 3-bet, 4-bet, full to 4-bet, squeeze, full to squeeze, right? So I wasn't talking about squeeze and full to squeeze today, but still, you can get all everything together and put it on your HUD. Then for pull flop, you could have probably continuation bet on the flop in position and out of position because people will differentiate quite a bit about it between those two because people you usually have very high numbers in position and very low numbers out of position. So if you have the general stat here, it can very easily get you on the wrong way by thinking these things. Uh, then turn C bet, river C bet is okay to have as well. Uh, there are some other stats like one on soft flop, when to show down you might want to add as well. But also talking about like, well, we talked about CBATs today, but we didn't talk about fold to CBATs. Well, any stat that I told you today here, you could use as a fold stat as well. So you could use the aggression stat as well as the fold stat. So um, talking about here, like for example, stabbing, you could have flop stab and fold to flop stab or check raise flop stab, you know, things like that. This is all very, very common situations on the poker table. They are going to happen every day against you. You're going to stab at least a ton of hands in a big session. And you're going to probe a ton of hands in a big session. You're going to see that a ton of hands. So like those are the stats you're looking for at the tables. Check raising stats, full to check raise, especially on the flop, which is very often going to be the case. Probing, dunk batting, how often this guy actually dunk bats. Probing again, like do you even have probing on your HUD as a microstakes players? Because like, yes, you might not have a lot of sample, but this is such a common play that happens so often that even with a small sample of, let's say, 1,000 hands, you're already going to have an idea of what, what your opponent is doing regarding probing, since it's so common. It's something you should consider having on your HUD, you know, like even if you don't have too much sample. And also like... Well, you can watch your stats as well now. You can watch how often you're probing. You can watch how often you're folding to probes and things like that. So use that in your advantage. I'm not going to tell you the exact HUD you want to have, but uh, there is an example of a lot of very common stats you could use here. And then when it comes to things that uh, you're not going to use that often, so let's say turn check raise or river check raise or river tree bat, whatever, put that on your pop-ups because... Well, at some point, you're going to have some good sample on your opponents and you're going to be on a decision on the river that you could maybe try to find something out on the pop-ups. Take advantage of positional stats, for, especially for like three batting and pre-flop stuff. Knowing how often your opponent three bats exactly big blind versus button is very different from knowing that he only three bats 6% overall. You know, because he could have the 6% overall, but over a large sample, he's actually three batting a good amount on the big blind versus the button. So... Be careful with that, and yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I hope I could give you a little bit of a hint on how to build your HUD, as well as some knowledge about some poker terms on trackers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of the newest videos. There will be a lot of live plays in the future. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know what do you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.